Morning guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Hope you guys are doing well today. It is an unusual day here in northern Idaho. It's actually, it's actually uh, quite chilly. <laughs> Our weather's been quite weird here. We've had like 30s, high 30s and low 40s in the mornings and then it's been getting warmer. But um, nice time of year. Nice weather, I will not complain. Um, this is the kind of weather that we enjoy the most is that nice cool temperatures that makes it easy to do the work that you've got to get done. I am predicting an early fall. Again, last year we had such an early fall, you could just smell it setting in and I'm predicting the same again. It just feels like it's going to be that way, but it's just been a neat year. Uh, everything is so lush. Uh, our grass is just so green, which is a first since we're here. Um, living in the Pacific Northwest, it's very common that it just gets dry really fast. So we'd mow our grass once or twice and then it would just die. And um, nice thing is we have a lot more moisture this year and everything is green. I think I mentioned it the other week that I've planted flowers every year I'm here and nothing had really taken and this year they just all bloomed. So it was a nice thing to see here being our last season here on the homestead. So all all is very good. It's been a crazy week. We have a lot going on. Um, busy trying to wrap up all the odds and ends of the construction of our home and uh, working on some of the things outside. The mountain man has been busy. He finished up the downstairs, uh, the entry, and created the uh, hinges and uh, hardware for the door, which looked fabulous. I'll share a picture a little later. And he got the bathroom door on and uh, has been doing stuff outside. So it's just really shaping up. We were supposed to show the house on Tuesday and uh, Monday evening around 11 o'clock we got a text saying that they weren't coming, that they had put an offer in on a place down in Boise. So it wasn't the right people, wasn't meant to be, so we just continue to um, move along and just keep doing what we got to do. God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. And rather than trying to question it or figure it out, we are just rolling with it. Good morning, Miss Shelley. Glad to have you joining me. And uh, so just rolling with circumstances, with your uh, situations, and just persevering along is the best we can do in a day-to-day in a day-to-day -day process, you know, we, we, we don't know what is ahead for any of us, but the more we persevere in our circumstances and just keep trudging forward, the outcome is always amazing. And that is exactly where we are right now is just focusing forward and uh, trying to enjoy life as we are uh, embracing all this. We got out on Sunday afternoon, it was, Mountain Man and I, and went up into the mountains and just drove around with the four-wheeler and the Mountain Boys uh, dirt bike and just kind of enjoyed the afternoon. It was very relaxing and it was really nice to just step away from everything. And I want to wish you all also a happy Independence Day, which will be tomorrow. So you guys will be, that'll be another day to just take a break and just enjoy the family and celebrate our independence for sure. But, um, and I'm glad Shelly's joining me because she is one of the individuals I was speaking with this week in regard to our topic today. Um, being able to grow fruits and vegetables is huge. Uh, there's nothing better than fresh produce and being able to enjoy fresh, wholesome vegetables, which are hard to find in the store. We talk about that all the time. But something that we don't discuss a lot is um, what kind of edibles are around you and that are accessible to you and that could probably be harvested or foraged for free. One of the things we talked about this week, Shelly and I, were raspberries. Um, she has some beautiful plants around her home that just took off and are huge, and she will have lots of raspberries. Um, we here in Idaho have lots of wild raspberries and black raspberries growing, and this year, again, with it being lush and beautiful here and things blooming different than previous, the raspberry bushes are just loaded. So every day I've been getting out and checking them to see if they are ready to be uh, harvested. But being able to partake on those things is huge. Another thing here is huckleberries that will be coming on before too awful long. 
but being able to forage those things, harvest those things, and utilize them, whether you're going to dehydrate them, freeze dry them, make jellies and jams, can them. Um, there's so many different ways that we can preserve um, our fruits and our vegetables. Um, the other day I had some freeze dried blueberries in uh, a smoothie and you know, I got to the bottom of the container and it was a lot of crumbs, but it made for such a really good smooth, I didn't have to blend it, I didn't have to do anything, I just had to powder. So sometimes even being able to dehydrate our berries and then put them in a powder, those powders can be used for so many different things. And for those of us that are doing smoothies on a fairly regular basis, if not daily, um, that's a great way to do things. So just thought I'd put that out there. That just sort of happened by accident for me. Um, but the other thing I want to mention today that I feel is really important is there's a lot of people um, that have abundance of apple trees, pear trees, and, and oftentimes fruit, the raspberries and different things growing. Good morning, Tammy. And what we can do, you know, we see a lot of fruit being wasted out here um, a lot because they're growing in public places and nobody picks them um, and sometimes it's because there's people that have them in their yard and either they've gotten to an age where they cannot um, pick them themselves and they just go to waste um, or it's something they're just not interested in but to me that just breaks my heart and drives me crazy to see all that waste so it it has occurred already that I have stopped by places and asked people if I could pick some and um, also offered to pick some for them. So being able to do things like that, maybe a little trade there that they may not be able to um, be able to gather them themselves. Sorry, something came across my screen. Are you guys able to hear me? I just was informed that there is some sort of a Facebook outage, so I don't know. My live is up on the screen, but I'm not seeing any response, so I just want to be sure that you guys are hearing me. Hopefully it's recording. Woo, I just got rid of the... There we go. I just took the comments off the screen. I didn't know I could do that. But, and and forgive me today, I, I feel very off. I've been very off all week. Um, I am processing heavy metals through my detox, and they just beat me up. Um, really messes with my head, and uh, I just don't feel well when I'm going through this part of a detox. So uh, forgive me if I'm off, um, and I'm not my bubbly self, that is why. But... Um, I want to encourage you guys to get out if you see fruit, you know, and if it's along side of the road, you've got to be careful because depending where you are, stuff might be getting sprayed. The other thing is, is if it's directly along side of the road, you'd be amazed at how much pollution ends up on the fruits from just the cars passing by. So do be cautious with that. Um, I had taken you guys on a video journey with me before with the Mountain Boy a couple years back. We were picking fruits off of what used to be an old train track that they converted to a riding path and a walking path. And because it used to be an old train track, they were throwing thing the, the seeds from their plums and their apples and that out the window. Well, many of them took root. And there is so much fruit going to waste down there on that track. It's insane. So the Mountain Boy and I had picked plums and we had picked apples down there that summer. And... Uh, it's just amazing. If you can get out, there's different parks in our area that have a lot of, um, woo, careful, missus. Easy, sister. Thank you. <laughs> careful. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of parks that have fruit locally here. Um, and I know families that go with the family, their family and uh, do a day of, of foraging and harvesting. So being able to fill our freezers, our canning jars, our canning shelves, our dehydrated foods, you know, being able to do that from stuff that we are gathering from the wild is absolutely amazing. And I just wanted to encourage it because now is the time 
that many of your berries are going to be taking off, your strawberries. Um, the other thing is, is if you have pick your own orchards and farms near you and you don't have a garden of your own, that is a great way to do it too. Um, I used to love doing that with my kids when they were little. We would go and pick blueberries and we would go pick strawberries and we would pick apples. Um, but being able to get out and do that and, and you get uh, the produce for much cheaper because you're picking it yourself. And if you go in the early mornings or the early evenings, it's just so nice to be out there. Uh, you're not in the heat of the day, and it's a memory maker for sure. The Mountain Boy has talked about it multiple times. So, you know, that it had it ingrained in him and that he enjoyed it. That's something that we do enjoy doing. So, and um, that is something that I have to share today. Uh, we will be moving the Mountain Boy back to the homestead here today, later today. Um, excited about that. Um, with our situation being unknown, there are some of his things here that he wanted to sell and clean up. And um, we have been looking into trade schools and uh, a couple schools for the mountain boy to get involved in. And him being here will make it easier to make all that happen. And uh, he's got some uh, specific studies he needs to do for some of the enrollments. So um, he is coming back on the homestead today to partake on his new venture. And I am really, really excited about that and excited for what may be ahead for him as well with additional schooling and um, getting involved in different trades. So good morning, Miss Rachel. I hope you guys can hear me okay. I'm not seeing any activity, um, and maybe it's behind the scenes. You know what, I didn't consider looking at that, so let me see if on my other app you guys are commenting, and I'm just not seeing it today on this one, so bear with me as this probably is going to get really loud. While um, I'm doing this, I wanted to ask you guys to take a moment and pray for Justin and Heather. Um, they are the folks that I've talked about several videos back and a couple of the videos we had talked about them. Um, they lost all the contents of their, well, they lost everything of theirs um, in a fire in, I believe it was February or March out here. And uh, they were blessed with an awesome opportunity through Charles, one of our community members here, and they are heading um, right now to West Virginia. They left over a week ago, Monday it was a week, and they have just now made it to Illinois. Um, they've had one problem after the other on the road um, with tires going, bearings going, hitches breaking. It's been pretty rough for them, and I know that they are having a really hard time. Um, you have to keep in mind that Heather is pregnant and due uh, any time here upcoming and they have three children too so traveling like that on the road and having these kind of struggles is pretty hard um, yeah things are definitely wonky today so like I said hopefully you can hear me um, and let me just I'm actually inviting two people while I am on here there we go okay um, so getting out and being able to harvest what you can from your surroundings is a huge saving. We are all trying to fill our pantry and feed our families, and it's getting harder and harder to do that with good, healthy foods and, and being able to find resources for good, healthy foods. And to be able to add that you're able to forage these things for free from the wild is a really huge bonus. Another thing we get out here that I absolutely love is elderberries. I will make elderberry syrup, elderberry jelly, elderberry juice, and then I also make several tinctures so that we have it for the winter months. Good morning, Jill. So, like I said, I don't know if you guys are able to hear me or not today. There aren't any comments coming through, which is just fine, but just so long as you can hear me okay. Um, but give me a thumbs up if you're able to hear me if you can. If not, I'm just going to keep jabbering away. It's always much more fun when you guys are um, chatting back with me. But if Facebook is fighting, and I wouldn't be surprised today. There's been all kinds of oddities this week. But I am going to continue chatting here. 
Yeah, so I mentioned it earlier. We were supposed to show our house on Tuesday, and that fell through. Um, but I am thoroughly enjoying my time here and being able to enjoy the house till it sells. And we are just fully trusting God for the outcome and his hand in all this. It's definitely going to take a special person to want to live here. I was talking to our friends last night and they said it's going to take finding another Tammy, which I kind of thought was funny. Um, good morning, Charles. And it's definitely going to be somebody that wants to live this life. Someone that has a very, very similar mindset to us in enjoying our seclusion, um, enjoying the, the peace and quiet back here, not having a need to have neighbors directly on top of them and, and so forth. Um, so this is weird. It is, it's telling me I'm live and I think it's recording, but it appears to not be working on Facebook. So, which doesn't surprise me any because today's topic is really nitty gritty. Um, I'm definitely stepping out of my faith today on our next topic uh, of this chat. Um, so the enemy is fighting, whether it's f bringing Facebook down as a result of it, I don't know. And hopefully you can all watch the replay and catch all of this. If not, I'll do it again. But um, being able to live this lifestyle for us is just such a great reward and such a great opportunity and it is going to take that special per person. I had a dream the other night that somebody bought it as a hunting camp and only wanted to use it twice a year and ask if we would caretake it so that was kind of funny. Who knows why I have these dreams or why why we think these thoughts but who knows it's in God's hands and we will see what happens. But I'm going to keep chatting since this is completely fighting with me. Um, one of the things I wanted to share this week, um, just been having so many weird confrontations and, and being involved in different conversations and it's just, it's been disheartening and saddening to me. Um, I see so many people that are twisting, you know, God's word and that are turning things inside out and upside down and truly the more we've walked out this year the more we see that there are so many hurting people and um just so many people that have such a jaded view on things and that of course is because of the world we live in the world we live in is truly very jaded. Um, things that are happening right now, I feel, are quite biblical. And I really believe and truly feel that we need to... Okay. So, one of the things... That I see is that we're not it's just like it's just like living off the grid all over the United States there are places that people can no longer choose to live off the grid because we as the people are not standing up and voicing our opinion for our rights things are slowly being taken away things that should not be being taken away are being taken away things that should not ever be an option are being put out there and and approved and celebrated and and it's just so twisted and I don't usually comment on things that are political or I don't like to stir the pot. I don't say things to go out there and cause a ruckus or to create a fuss or a fight um, because there's so many people in this world that are just sitting there waiting for that opportunity to just pounce. And 
I spoke up this week because I couldn't let it go. It was just really, really bothering me greatly. Um, I follow somebody online that is a Christian. And uh, they decided to post their um, support. And, and okay, and let me say this first. Um, I am a Christian. I fail daily. I am not perfect. I tell you that all the time. For those of you that know me well, you know that I, 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 I'm no different than anybody else. And I don't, I don't act to be any better or any different than anybody else. I love everybody. I give people more than the first chance. You know, I am a lover of life and and I I believe it's important to do our part in loving others and helping others. And because I'm a Christian, I share my faith. I share my faith greatly because I've had life experiences that have caused me to realize that that is part of my calling and also that we are called to be a light in the dark and we are called to be those that are helping others to see that light. That doesn't mean that I'm pushing my faith on anybody. I share my faith so that you understand why I am motivated and why I'm motivated the way I am and why I live the life I do and why I live the life the way I do. I've expressed in past videos, you know, some of my imperfections and my faith wasn't always this strong. But we all change as life goes on and I feel that it would be an injustice if I didn't share the miracles that are happening around myself and my family with others because it is a true testimony of God's love, God's mercy, God's grace. And it's also a true testimony that what I have you can have too. And that's the most important part to me. I am not prejudiced. I love all people. I have friends that are lesbians. I have friends that are gay. I have friends that are black. I have friends that are white. I have friends of many different nationalities. And you know what? I love them all equally and I love them all the same. And that's what we are called to do. But where people tend to get confused is that we are called to love the person, but we are not called to love the sin. And this Christian person that I follow decided to share her support in the LGBTQ community and was really flaunting her approval of the community. Like I said, I have friends that are, are gays and lesbians, but I do not support what they stand for. And I am not afraid to tell you that today on live video, I do not support what they stand for. I have seen such destruction of our country through us supporting things that we are not supposed to support. That doesn't mean that we don't love the people. That doesn't mean that we don't pray for the people. That doesn't mean that we don't have relationships with the people. But it does mean that I don't vocally support them. No different than if a, a close friend of mine decided to become a prostitute. I would not support that. I would not care for her any differently, but I would not support that. When we condone things that are a sin, we are not, we, we are being sinners ourselves. And so many people are afraid to stand up for the truths and the facts and, and, and other people jade things. You know, I made a comment on that, on that post and, and said just that, that, you know, we are called to love. We are called to love the individual, not the sin. We are not supposed to support the sin. And, you know, that doesn't mean, you know, some instantly non-believers 
you know, throw in, in your face that you are throwing your religion on them. I'm not throwing my religion on you. I'm just sharing with you what I believe. But when we stand up for what we believe, we are not permitted to have an opinion. And, and that's where all the battling goes back and forth. In reality, we are all entitled to our own opinion. We are all entitled to our own fate. But as believers, we are, we are called to stand out but not in, in a negative way. We've talked about some of the ways that as Christians we are failing over the last couple weeks. And, and we are. We are. We are truly failing because we are not walking the walk and talking the talk. We are doing half-hearted presentations of what Christianity is. Where if we were walking the walk and talking the talk and loving the people but not supporting the sin, Standing up for the things that we need to stand up against. You know, it's a pretty, it, it's a crime when you read in the paper that a bakery was shut down because it was a Christian family run business and they chose not to bake a cake, a wedding cake for a gay wedding. And because of that, they were sued for discrimination. And they lost their business. It's also a crime, in my opinion, that our church is called to not support these types of acts. Yet we are marrying same-sex people in our own churches. Like I said, I love the people. I have nothing against the people. People have the choice to choose what they wish to do in life. But that doesn't mean that we need to support it. That doesn't mean that we need to be ignorant either in standing up against it. It's just when you look at the world as a whole and you sit back, you know, I think because we live back here and we aren't out in the day-to-day -day grind every day, like the majority of people are, I think you can see things so much clearer. And it's, it's hard to watch. It's hard to watch people saying, you know, that they don't have to be a Christian to love their neighbors and that they can be loving people, yet, yet they turn around and have such filthy things to say to somebody that doesn't agree with their perspective. And it's just disheartening to watch. It's disheartening to see how people behave. And because I put my comments out there, then somebody had to uh, throw it back at me, you know, saying really weird stuff that made no sense. It's just they want to fight. They want to fight for their, for their viewpoint. And... It just, it just saddens me greatly to see our country becoming what it is and us allowing things to go into to, to be processed as new laws, to be okay, that, that things that, you know, cause complete and total destruction in the past is being let to reign. And... And I'm not saying that when we stand up for our perspective that we need to be ignorant and vulgar and, and um, stoop to their level. But what I am saying is we do need to stand firm. If you have friends that are going down a wrong path, if you truly love them, you know, we need, we need to be willing to say those hard words and, you know, to... Be able to speak the truth. You know, so many people turn the words in the Bible upside down and sideways to make it suit their needs and their argument. And I think that what we need to do more than anything, you know, many of the people are like, well, you, you shouldn't be judging. I'm not judging. I'm not judging anybody. 
I still love everybody, but I don't condone what they're doing. I don't support it. I don't blatantly support it to get reviews, to get to get a higher placement on social media. I'm not supporting it because it's not right. And and I really feel, you know, the more you walk in Christ, the more you're called out by the Holy Spirit to stand your ground. And I guess that's where this is coming from today. I feel the need for me to stand my ground in who I am, in my faith. And, and I'm not saying that anybody is doing anything right or wrong. But what I am going to do today is to call you out and to ask you to read God's word and to really soak up God's word and to learn what it really says and to walk that out. You know, like I said, none of us are perfect. That is a given. There is not one of us that's perfect. So we can't point fingers. And honestly, that's not my nature. I'm not a tit for tat person. I am not on this planet to tell you you are wrong and that I am so right. That's not how it works. But what I am saying as a whole and as a body of Christ, that we need to stand up more for the word of God. We, we are the church. We don't need a physical building and a structure around us to be a church. We need to be willing to do the hard. You know, God said we would be persecuted. I knew when I made a comment on that post the other day that I was going to be persecuted. And I knew that there are people that just don't understand what I'm saying. And that's believers and unbelievers alike. But the more you spend time in the Word, and the more you spend time with God, and the more you experience Him in your life, and the more you experience the miracles that He provides, and the more you see His hand in everything we do, I hope that it helps you to be more bold in your faith, because that's what we are called to do. We are called to be disciples. and. Life isn't easy, and being a disciple certainly is not easy. Um, people misconstrue things and turn things inside out and upside down. People have been hurt, so they are paranoid and fearful and untrusting. And I walk this life, and it's just, it saddens me to see all the destruction. But I do know that that destruction can be turned around and that through our love and friendship and the gift of giving and helping we can be a light we can show who we really are and the more you walk the walk and talk the talk and you show who you are what you're made of who you are made from and walk with integrity We can, we can make a difference. We can change lives. And I'm probably going to catch a lot of slack for being this bold today, but you know what? It needs to be said. And like I said, I have friends of all different types. We have many audience members of all different types. I love you all. I love you all. And I'm not saying that I don't love the people. I'm just saying that there are a lot of things that are being done in our country and in our world that is not right. And when it's not biblical, I don't support it. And I'm not afraid to share that with the world. I don't support it. But I do love the people. That being said, this was today's devotional.
It's called Not of This World. And it is readings from 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Let me go there and I'll read that to you quick. Maybe. All right, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. You should know this, Timothy, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and, and love pleasure rather than God. They will, act they will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from the people like that. What is going on in the world? You've probably heard people say this, and as Christians, we sometimes wonder how we are to live in a culture that seems to be on a downhill traje trajectory ethically. Since Jesus said of his disciples, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world, we can certainly conclude that our lives should look different from unbelievers' lives. We should be making a difference, and we should be clearly seen and... Be making a positive difference. The darker things be the darker things become, the more pronounced should be the contrast between our way of life and the world's. And one of the most obvious differences should be in the area of love. In Second Timothy three, one through five, Paul warned that in the last days, a period just before Jesus returns, mankind would be lovers of self, money and pleasure rather than of God and others. Some misplaced affection results in arrogance, ungratefulness, unholiness, and all the other tragic descriptions found in this passage. When love becomes distorted, these vices inevitably follow. And today we see the evidence of this all around us, don't we? Even the technology that makes life easier is drawing us apart. Face-to-face -face conversations and phone calls are increasingly being replaced with emails and texts. Everywhere we turn, eyes are looking down at phones rather than seeing the people right in front of them. The good news is that we can make a difference by intentionally living and loving differently from the world around us. As the, world to, as the Lord told us in Matthew 22, 37-40, the way to fight the lovelessness all around us is by loving God and our neighbors. And this is so true. You know, when you... When you go against the grain and you state that you don't support something, one of the comments that came to me was that being yourself is not a sin. And I said, I said, no, you're correct. Being yourself is not a sin. But when the actions that you are presenting while being yourself are a sin, I can't support it. Doesn't mean I can't love you, but I don't support it. And I'm not going to stand up on the mountaintop and scream that I support it just to fit in. Because we're not called to do that. And, you know, maybe through this, this is what's, what God is calling me out, calling me out as well. Is that, you know, we do need to take a stance. We need to take a stand. It doesn't mean that, you know, people are going to like us. I'm not judging anybody because I have things to be judged. You know... What we need to do in life is love each other for who we are, to not judge or make false accusations about people or talk behind their backs because they are involved in something that we don't support. What we need to do is just be there to support them in a way, in a loving way, and to show them that we are filled with God and that although we don't support what they believe, this is what we believe and why. You know, I just think that sometimes in life we need to be a little bolder. 
what happens is we sit behind a screen and a keyboard and as it's said in this you know we don't have that face-to-face -face confrontation a lot of the people that have such vulgar things to say on a screen and in typing I guarantee you would not have the courage to say something like that face to face but because we've been enabled to be behind a screen and to be able to just freely shoot our mouse off it just it just saddens me it saddens me to see so much so much is going on and the thing is we we need to we need to really stay in God's word and like it says here, we need to we, we need to be different in our lives as believers. But that different needs to be a good different, not a jaded difference. And and that's where things go awry, is that people turn the word of God around to suit their needs. And and we misrepresent Christianity. We misrepresent believers. You know, Christianity is such a scary word anymore because you say Christianity and it, it is viewed as a negative and it's a shame it's a shame it's through hypocrisy and just so much craziness of people not walking out their faith and I, I really feel we need to step up our game and I just want to call those of you out that are believers to step up your game and 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 for those of you that are not believers, there is a great gift in being a believer. For one, and the biggest, is that we have everlasting life through Him, through His sacrifice on the cross for us. But life is hard regardless what you believe. And I can't, I've said it so many times, I couldn't imagine having walked out my life without God in it. There is such a fulfillment and a sense of peace knowing that God is leading myself and my family. And if you are interested in learning more, I'm always a text message, a private message, a comment away. We have a huge list of prayer requests down below. There are so many people in need of prayer and I feel so tremendously blessed to have people being willing to reach out to me and share um, their prayer needs because what's really awesome is sitting in this seat and being able to be in that position I am not only able to see mine and my family's miracles but I am able to see others and it's so awesome to be involved and to be part of that and I just ask that if you are prayerful that you look at the list below um, there are some distinct ones that I would like to um, shout out today as I mentioned Justin and Heather and their family um, Charles also he is dealing with some struggles health issues and could really use some support and prayers um, a little celebration um, Miss Kelly that follows us here in the community had hay out the best three acres of hay or three tons of hay they've had ever grown on their homestead and it got rained on a multitude of times I believe over six times it got rained on and they still were able to salvage it so God is good and I'd like you to pray for Pat Kenny he is going to be starting up another session of chemo and uh, as you know it's been affecting his heart and uh, he is dealing with multiple uh, melanoma um, as a result of Agent Orange and uh, Pat Thank you for not only your friendship and your fatherhood, but also your service to our country. And um, I'd also like to ask you to pray for Diana and Craig and uh, Tammy and her family, as well as Chad. And um, there are quite a few others. Oh, Kim and Martin. As we've talked about in the past, Martin was jogging with his daughter, ended up in a coma after having a heart attack. It's been 126 days, 
and it is not getting any easier for the family. Um, it's really getting emotionally hard uh, because their father and husband is um, in, in the hospital in a coma, but he is starting to, he really is a miracle. There's been many miracles. Um, he's, everything that he's doing is non-typical for the type of coma he's in and really is unexplained, which is awesome. And we all know what that is, that's God. But he is following people's voices. He's turning his head to their voice. He's making expressions on his face that totally fit the conversation. He's just unable to, to speak. And um, I just ask that you keep praying for their miracle and also for peace in their family. It's just such a hard, hard thing. Um, they have seven children and uh, a mother with incredible, incredible faith. Kim is just amazing, um, real inspiration. So please keep them in your prayers. And I feel like I'm missing some. Um, just help us pray that uh, we find the right seller for our home. And uh, just thank you for being a part of our community. You know, the, one of the things that is really awesome about our community is we do have a very strong, loving community. And it is very diverse. It is not all believers. There are a lot of loving non-believers in our midst and I am just so blessed to have such a tremendous community of people with a lot of love and a lot of integrity you know I go to a lot of different pages and to different YouTube channels and I just see the filth that people say and the nastiness and how they interact with each other and they're just not nice and you know we never have that and I'm just so grateful for you all and I'm grateful for you being part of our walk you know, I just, I just love what we have going here, and I give God all the glory. I am just a vessel being used, and He's been using me greatly since my illness, and I just feel tremendously blessed by that, and you guys are such a tremendous blessing to me. So I'm going to say a prayer and let you guys get back to your day. Um, since this wasn't working, if you're watching the replay, would love to hear your comments. Um, you know, I just believe we need to step up our game. We need to truly step up our game, exuberate the word to the world in our actions, and, and be a light, and be willing to plant our feet firm without being obnoxious and ignorant and just stand true to what we believe in. We really need to do that. We really need to be that light in the dark and a community of believers that comes together to stand firm in what, what we, we know is truth. So, those are my thoughts for today. <laughs> so, I'm gonna say a quick prayer here. Papa, I just thank you for your love and your mercies and your grace in our lives. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the truths that you offer us. I thank you for the blessing of all these people that join me and just their loving personalities. And just to be able to praise you for all the prayers you are answering and the miracles that you are clearly sharing and showing to us. And I just ask that through the Holy Spirit, you work in each and every one of us that are present and those that are watching the replay. And I just ask that you give them the courage to stand firm in your word and in your truth and to not celebrate sin in our world, but to love those that are sinning and, and help lovingly guide them to you. We need to be more loving in this world and not be as judgmental and it's hard to trust in this world. There's been so much chaos and so many hurt people, but if we could continue to be able to show God's love through our actions and our walk and our daily walk, you know, um, I know that over time we can change things and I love how you call me out I love how you plant my feet and I love how you give me the courage to speak the hard and also deal with the repercussions of speaking the hard 
you're there to protect us and guide us and and you clearly do that thank you for giving me the courage to boldly walk for you I give you all the glory and I ask that you just work in each and every one's lives help all those that are in need of your hand and uh, one of the names I forgot to mention is just Shelly and Sarah just continue to work in their lives also and Melanie it has had a lot of health issues and could really use some prayers and our friend Roger here in Idaho has been going through extensive surgeries due to infection I just ask that you be with him right now as he goes through uh, all the different treatments he needs to just help him to heal and improve and to find you and Lord I just thank you for what you're gonna do in each of our lives by blessing us with those around us and by blessing us with opportunities to serve and just allow us to learn to walk more in the word and be comfortable in sharing your truths and not stooping to the level of ignorance and obnoxiousness to get our points across because we serve no one by doing that well actually we do we serve the enemy I just ask that you give us the courage give us the right words and show us where we need to love even more Lord I just thank you for what you're gonna do in each of our lives and I thank you so much for all the tremendous blessings that you've been pouring out and we ask all this in Jesus holy and precious name amen so guys I wish you a fabulous day thank you for taking the time to join me and listen and I hope you've gotten something out of this you know my intention was not to offend anybody today we are all entitled to live life by our terms. But if you are choosing to be a believer, we have special terms to follow. So that while we're being ourselves, which is not a sin, we do need to walk upright. And that's what I challenge you today. Let's be called out. Allow the Holy Spirit to rule you and call you out, to plant your feet and to help you walk upright. I love you all. I can't wait to see you next week. And uh, wishing you a wonderful Independence Day. God bless everyone.